The Smiths are probably the single most influential band of 80s Britain, and in my opinion, the best band ever made. In their short lifespan of 5 years, they managed to create some of the most amazing albums and songs you'll ever hear in your life, and bands today are still trying to replicate their sound, even after 40 years. There's one small problem though, everyone seems to absolutely hate the frontman. If you've ever seen a video about the Smiths on TikTok, you've probably noticed that the comments are saying something like, I love the Smiths but I hate Morrissey, or um, I don't think that he knew how John of Arc felt, even though that's the whole point of the f***ing song. Anyways, this hate that everyone seems to have about Morrissey isn't a new trend. Even Robert Smith in the 80s absolutely hated his guts. But why? If his music and his lyrics are so amazing, why does everyone want this guy dead? Well, there's a lot of answers to this question, and today I'm gonna go over all the reasons why people seem to hate Stephen Patrick Morrissey so much. Huge disclaimer, even though I also hate Morrissey and I think he's a horrible person, I think it's important to separate the art from the artist and this video is not meant to make you feel bad for listening to his music in any way. Even if you don't want to support his solo stuff, I don't think it's fair to put down the amazing work that Johnny Marr did with the Smiths just because this guy couldn't keep his mouth shut. Also, this is just a one-off video I'm gonna make because I really wanted to talk about this topic, but uh, I'm planning to make some video essays on my favorite albums pretty soon, so make sure to subscribe for that. Now back to the video. Well, first of all, Morrissey is really, really arrogant. Every time he speaks in interviews, or even with fans or other musicians, he sounds like the most pretentious douchebag in the world. Even if you ignore some of his horrible takes, just the way he talks and the way he tries to make everything he says sound really intelligent and profound just makes you want to rip your hair off. One interview that is particularly famous is him and George Michael talking about Joy Division and Ian Curtis. I think most people's vision of Joy Division is entirely coloured by the death of Ian Curtis. But I look upon Ian Curtis and certainly New Order as neither singers or, or lyricists but as symbolists. I think they were quite accurate and they, um, they, they had the spirit of, of the times. And, but I think it was totally false. It was like people saying, well yes, this is how life is, totally without emotion, which of course they weren't. And we are totally hard people, which of course they weren't. It was like this complete affectation uh, of people wanting to be something that they weren't. I find it quite sad, but in a musical sense I hear nothing whatsoever. In some aspects, he's right about people focusing on Ian's death more than the music sometimes. A similar thing happened with Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. But saying that Joy Division has no musical appeal is just crazy. I don't even have to mention this, but Unknown Pleasures is one of the most important albums in music history, and it completely defined the music of 80s Britain. Calling Ian Curtis anything but a genius lyricist is just nonsense. The same ridiculous argument that he uses against Joy Division can also be used against the Smiths. Morris's lyrics talk about how empty and emotionless his life is, and also, it's really obvious that the Smiths, willingly or not, took a lot of inspiration from Joy Division both musically and lyrically. It doesn't help the fact that in the same interview George Michael gave a way smarter and more mature response to the same question about Joy Division. Um, and I actually really liked Joy Division or particularly their second album. Well, Closer. Closer. I thought Closer, the second side of Closer is uh, one of my favourite albums, it's just beautiful. Another example of Morris's arrogance is his beef with the Cure's frontman Robert Smith that started when he was asked if I put you in a room with Robert Smith, Mark E. Smith, and a loaded Smith & Wesson, who would buy the bullet first? And Morrissey answered with, I'd line them up so that one bullet would penetrate them simultaneously. Robert Smith is a winchbag. Again, this is pretty funny coming from Morrissey, who literally built a career on being a winchbag. But don't worry, because Robert Smith responded really maturely with, Morrissey is so depressing, if he doesn't off himself soon, I probably will. He also talked about Morris in an interview in 1986 when he said, I, I just don't like, like him. I, I think he's really ar arrogant, mainly. He's like a professional, a professional intellectual. It's like the worst type of person. After that, in 1997, Morris responded with his famous, I do not like the cure. Yes, um, I do not like the cure. No. I have never liked the cure. Why have you never liked the I cure? I do not like the cure. I believe it's mutual. Later on when Disintegration came out, he made some comments about how he disliked that album too. But recently, in 2019, he apologized to Robert Smith by saying, I said some terrible things about him 35 years ago, but I didn't mean them. I was just being very Grange Hill. It's great when you can blame everything on Tourette's syndrome. So at least that beef is squashed, but I'm pretty sure Robert Smith just kind of forgot that Morrissey existed in the last 30 years. Anyways, you might look at all of this and just say, that's it? He's arrogant? Every musician is arrogant, who cares? Which I would agree with. 
he isn't the first or the last arrogant person I'd listen to. The main thing that made me stop supporting him is his very right-wing political views. When you listen to songs like The Queen Is Dead and Margaret on the Guillotine, you'd think that his political views would be at least left-leaning, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. In 2007, in an interview for the NME, he said, You'll hear every accent under the sun, apart from the British accent, in Knightsbridge. His hypocrisy has no end, because not only his parents are immigrants, but every member of the Smiths were second generation Irish, which means all of their parents were immigrants. But I guess being an immigrant is fine only when you're white. When asked about his Irish parents, he said, Yes, but it's different now, because the gates are flooded, and anybody can have access to England and join in. You have to be sensible about everything in life. You can't say, everybody come into my house, sit on the bed, have what you like, do what you like, it wouldn't work. Spoken like a true member of the EDL, but don't worry because he doesn't stop here. In 2019, he caught some backlash for wearing a For Britain badge on Jimmy Fallon's show, to which he responded with, Everyone ultimately prefers their own race. Does it make everyone racist? He just cannot stop digging his own grave. Morris is also a big fan of Brexit and the one and only Nigel Farage. I hope you enjoy a few pints with the lads tonight. Up the ra! Up the ra, Nigel. A lot of people look at these controversies and feel sad about how Morrissey has changed from his earlier years, but that's just not true. If you actually look into his political views in the 80s and 90s, you'd see that he'd always been a hateful prick. All while he was thinking, it's so easy to laugh, it's so easy to hate, it takes guts to be gentle and kind. There's this great article by Mongol Media that I'm gonna link down below, which inspired me to make this entire video. The article is titled, Morrissey isn't senile, he's always been a racist, and talks about Morrissey's horrible lyrics on some of his solo songs that people just kind of seem to ignore. Some of these songs are Bengalian platforms, England for the English, Asian rut, and this is not your country. And if you needed any more proof of what audience Morris is attracting, just have a look at the comments on the YouTube videos of these songs. Just an actual rally. I do recommend reading the whole article, but some quotes I'm gonna get from it are Morris is saying, I don't hate Pakistanis, but I dislike them immensely. They also talk about how in the 90s, Morris's concerts became a place for the NF and C19 to organize after he famously went on stage wearing a huge Union Jack flag, which basically became a sign of him supporting the rising f***ism in 90s Britain. To top it all off, he also said that black people and white people will never really get on or like each other. But how can he say all of this horrible stuff, you might ask? I thought he was vegan. Don't worry, because he didn't forget to use that as a way to support his far-right policies. In 2011, in response to the far-right attacks in Norway, Morrissey said, That is nothing compared to what happens in McDonald's and Kentucky Fried shit every day. And also, he wore an Animal Lives Matter shirt when the BLM protests were going on. He uses veganism as a way for him to make an excuse for his hate towards minorities, something that's called white veganism. A clear example of this is him saying in 2010, did you see the thing on the news about their treatment of animals and animal welfare? You can't help but feel that the Chinese are subspecies. Something that he refuses to apologize for, just in case you thought he felt bad for his words. There's like a million more examples of Morrissey being a hateful and horrible person, and I don't think anyone is that surprised it turned out like this. The main reason why I wanted to make this video isn't so I could play devil's advocate with Morrissey. He is and always has been a horrible person, and I don't think that's up for debate. I made this video so people who are confused about the hate he gets can get more informed and stop trying to make excuses for him. If you still support him, that's your choice, but uh, I just stick to listening to the Smiths and ignoring whatever shit he says next.